Hi, welcome to this video which is the second part of a three-part video series where we explore how to make an eVTOL aircraft. On this channel Synergy Files we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better more sustainable world. Subscribe to the channel to get more such videos. In part one we looked at some of the design principles. In part two we will look at simple calculations that will serve as a guidance for setting up design parameters and selecting components. Although calculations for designing a robust aircraft are lengthy and fairly complex but we will break them down for you in the simplest form. For example, a good place to begin is the vertical thrust of the aircraft. It must be more than the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft to achieve a liftoff when the aircraft is in hovering mode. Now in an eVTOL aircraft we use propellers that are rotated to a vertical axis to achieve upward thrust. The blades in the propeller should be long enough and the motor should rotate fast enough to give us the thrust force we need. The required thrust as mentioned before depends upon the total weight. The first parameter therefore to settle would be the total weight of the aircraft with the passenger included. We can take 75 kilos for a passenger's weight to be a reasonable estimate. If the total weight of the aircraft with the passenger is limited to 200 kilograms, then this value gives us a good starting point. We can revisit this value later as we change the design. Based on this value, we can find out the minimum thrust required for liftoff to be achieved. So, having assumed the eVTOL aircraft to be able to carry a single passenger, the weight of the aircraft itself including the motor and the batteries comes out to be 125 kilograms. This way we can set aside almost 80 to 100 kilograms of weight for the battery pack. Now, given that the battery pack energy density is about 200 watt hours per kilogram, we can have a battery pack of almost 16 to 20 kilowatt hours. This value of battery pack capacity is reasonable and can even furnish a flight time of an hour if the aircraft has an efficient design. So with 200 kilograms of weight in total, we would require at least 200 times 9.81 or 1962 Newton or approximately 2000 Newtons of thrust force. This thrust force can be furnished by either electric ducted fans or open propellers. Electric ducted fans are known to the radio control model community. These ducted fans are more efficient compared to open propellers. Nonetheless, they come with a weight penalty because of the added material forming the duct. With a 80-200 kg battery pack and a single 75 kg passenger, it leaves weight for the frame, seating, motor and the propeller blade of about 25 to 45 kilograms. It would be tempting at this point to aim for a higher weight of the aircraft by also considering an increase in the required thrust. The other approach would be to reduce the weight of the battery pack to accommodate for the weight of the aircraft frame. Which approach is better will get clarified as we proceed further. Because there will be other parameters too in the calculation, therefore to check for several what-if scenarios, it will be wise to use a spreadsheet. So through just a cursory look, we have worked out the value of 2 kN of thrust. Now this is the bare minimum value and of course the aircraft should have extra thrust for better performance and safety. This would also help the aircraft in meeting adverse weather conditions. For example, when the ambient temperature is too high, the air is less dense and so the ducted fans will produce less thrust despite moving at the same RPM. And therefore, we should be aiming for at least 10% higher value of thrust than the minimum required. If we want to add ballistic parachute for safety, then we are looking at thrust values upward of 2.2 kN in the design we are considering. Now for attaining this thrust we can use electric ducted fans or open propellers as mentioned earlier. If we know the average outflow velocity of the ducted fan or the propeller we can easily calculate the thrust it produces through the simplified formula 
f equals to mass flow rate times the velocity. Bear in mind the velocity here is the average outflow velocity. We can also find the minimum power required by the electric ducted fan or the propeller through the following formula which is power is equal to nu times half times the mass flow rate times the square of the velocity. When nu is the efficiency which will depend upon the type of propeller. The efficiency of an open propeller is about 70 to 80 percent. This efficiency value is the ratio of the energy consumed by the motor to the energy imparted to the air. And the above formula suggests that if we have to increase the thrust we can either do it by increasing the mass flow rate or by increasing the velocity. If we however take the latter approach of increasing the velocity then the power consumption increases dramatically. It increases cubically to be particular. So having a low mass flow rate and a high outflow velocity is not the most efficient design approach particularly when we are looking to make the most out of our battery. It should be noted that when we are looking to have a higher mass flow rate, we will increase the fan or propeller diameter. On the other hand, when we are looking to increase the outflow velocity, we will increase the fan RPM. For low power consumption, the best approach would be to have as large fan or as large propeller as practically possible while trying to keep the outflow velocity as low as possible. There is however another factor that comes into play and this is the substantial weight increase when we scale up a geometry as discussed in the previous video. When we are trying to increase the electric fan duct diameter or the propeller diameter, the weight also increases which would mean more thrust requirement and so a balance has to be struck. We cannot just make the propeller as large as we want, we have to account for the weight penalty. So we may need more than one propeller depending upon the design. Just remember the number of propellers also add to the weight and therefore as mentioned earlier the best procedure would be to do the calculations on a spreadsheet and draw several curves for the number of fans versus weight, the length of propeller versus weight etc. All these curves will guide us to select the best design. We have included here an excel sheet for you with all the calculations. This excel sheet can be downloaded from the link in the description. You can play around with the numbers and check to see which design gives you the best possible power efficiency. Using the same spreadsheet we have done some calculations already. There were two designs that were found to have minimal power consumption. The first design was the one with three propellers with a blade diameter of 1 meter. This design will consume approximately 279 kilowatts for vertical takeoff. The second design was with four fans or four propellers, a gain of 1 meter blade diameter. This will require slightly lesser power for liftoff, which is 269 kilowatts. Once the aircraft is in the air and starts to move horizontally, the propeller blades will gradually tilt in the forward direction and instead of the initial upward thrust force alone, the lift force will start to generate as the aircraft picks up speed. Gradually, the lift generated by the wings will take over as the only force to keep the aircraft in the air. This will reduce the power consumption by the fans substantially. Once the aircraft has reached the cruise speed at which all the upward force is coming from the fixed wing lift, the power consumption can reduce by more than 80 times its original value. For example, as mentioned earlier, it will require around 280 kilowatts at the point of vertical takeoff to merely 2.4 kilowatts of power at cruise speed for our 200 kilogram aircraft. This assumes a cruise speed of 20 meter per second with a fixed wing area of 12 meter square. This tells us that to maximize the flight distance, the hovering time and the transitioning time to cruise speed should be kept minimum. This also explains why majority of our aircrafts use lift force for taking off and landing. The lift force can be easily calculated through the following formula. 
where CL is the coefficient of lift and its value is about 1.2 at an angle of attack of 10 degrees for a wing of y clock profile which is widely used. The same formula can be used to calculate the drag force on the wings by replacing the coefficient of lift with the coefficient of drag. Both these coefficients can be read off the chart for any particular airfoil shape. Note that there will be additional drag on the fuselage that also has to be taken into account. This will depend upon the profile drag coefficient and the frontal area or in other words the total area of the aircraft that cuts through the air. Several eVTOL aircrafts have already been made. Many of them are not well engineered in terms of maximizing flight duration and flight distance. In fact, many of the current designs are merely proof of concepts that highlight that the technology has the potential to become the main mode of transportation in the future. Therefore, there is good scope in optimizing the design. I hope this video will help students with the initial level concepts. Out of the many aircraft designs that we have seen, the aircraft called XTI Trifan comes the closest to being the most efficient. If big organizations sponsor eVTOL projects among students, then this will accelerate the development. Events like Shell Eco Marathon for eVTOL aircrafts will help us discover the best design. Now that we have some numbers in our hand, we can go forward to look for components. And in fact, in our next video, we will guide you through some of the components already available in the market. This concludes the second video on the development of eVTOL aircrafts. Thank you for your kind attention.